I'm beginning to think Yes, I'm beginning to think Thoughts become me Welcome to The Cost of Not Paying Attention, hosted by nationally recognized speaker Janine Hamner holman Janine knows what it takes to attract and retain world-class talent. Join her here each week on The Cost of Not Paying Attention as we use brain science, leadership, management, and real-life challenges managers face to explore the places where we aren't paying attention. Welcome to The Cost of Not Paying Attention. I'm your host, Janine Hamner-Holman. What am I paying attention to today? So there is this idea of the middle way, which comes out of the Buddhist tradition. And it's really about working to be free of a one-sided perspective, finding the path between two different things that we think of as opposite. And there's two ways that this is showing up in my life just today. So one is this idea of being committed and unattached, <laughs> which I got to tell you, it, this is a super challenging one for me because when I get committed to things, I tend to also get attached to the outcome. I, I want it to turn out a certain way. And when we are committed and unattached, we can be fully committed to a goal. So as anybody who's been listening to the podcast for a while knows, I am on a mission to have the world of work be one in which everyone can thrive. I can be 100% committed to that goal, that big picture, and yet be unattached essentially to the how. Because I can get really attached to like, oh my gosh, I really want to work with this one client or I really want to work on this one project. And sometimes that one client or that one project doesn't quite work out in the way that we think it is. And so I am, I am living into and honestly also struggling a bit with this idea of being fully committed and yet unattached. The other place that this that this idea is showing up. I had the opportunity um, right before I hopped onto this podcast to write my newsletter intro for this month. And as uh, many of you may be aware of, uh, June is Pride Month. And I really wanted to write something about Pride Month. And it feels like a... Actually, the, the, the newsletter part begins with, there's an old curse. May you live in interesting times. And, and we're living in really interesting times. And as I was writing it, I was doing some research. So Gallup poll, or, or the, the folks at Gallup released a poll just about a year ago that said that 70% of Americans, including 55% of Republicans, support same-sex marriage. Yay. And so far, here we are like almost at the midway point in 2023, as tracked by our friends at the Associated Press, there have been nearly 500 anti-LGBTQIA plus bills introduced in state legislatures across the nation. And, and so, you know, these are obviously two polar ideas that we can support same-sex marriage. 
there was a, a survey done uh, just a couple years ago by the folks at Procter & Gamble that found out that 75% of people who do not identify as LB, LGBTQIA+, and that's a super majority of people, 75% of the people who do not identify as gay and, and, that, and that whole wonderful um, listing are totally comfortable with seeing folks who are not straight as part of marketing campaigns. And so like, these are such, such different ideas that on the one hand, we're, we're happy us people being inclusive. And on the other hand, 500, almost 500 anti LGBTQIA plus bills introduced in state legislatures. And so through the writing of that article, I was really struggling with, with how we find the middle way. And, and I get that for all humans, like none of us, we, well, that's not true. Most of us, don't like change. And it feels in the world today like things are changing really fast. And that can be scary for some people. Like I can I can get that, I can be with that. And one of the things that's always been so great to for me about Pride Month to me about Pride Month is it it is this joyful, inclusive, generous celebration and and so how do we how do we get back to that idea of joyfully being together and and being in a country at the moment where things feel so polarized and it occurred to me while i was in the process of writing all of this that maybe I was also overthinking things. And, and so that's my direct connection into our guest for today. I'm so excited to have Christine Meyer here on the show with us. Christine is an executive life and leadership coach. She is the author of this really great book called Keep It Simple, Smarty Pants, Stop Overthinking, Start Aligning, Live Happy. She coaches super successful people to dream even bigger, to reach beyond their limitations and allow themselves uh, to, to move inside out, to create a life that makes them happy and confident while also making the impact that they are up to in the world. Her clients include Obama speechwriters and impact-driven serial entrepreneurs, Emmy Award winners, best-selling authors, multi-million dollar investors, founders of nonprofits and for-profit companies alike, radio personalities, professionals, leaders of change. She's a founding member and a regular contributor to the Forbes Coaches Council. And her second book, in her Keep It Simple Smarty Pants series is going to be out next year. Welcome to the show, Christine. Thank you for having me. That was a great introduction and a great beginning conversation. Thank you. I'm so excited that you're here and I'm, you know, and nothing, nothing is an accident. So I'm so excited that you're here with me today. So I'm going to ask you the question that I ask every, almost everybody at the beginning of the show, which is, what is something that you have become aware of that we're not paying enough attention to, either consciously or unconsciously? And what's the cost of that inattention? Well, I, I think that many people mm -hmm. don't pay attention to what they're thinking, feeling, and speaking about. Mm -hmm. And the cost of that, the result of that is that you are always creating your life in thought and word and vibration, if you will. Mm -hmm. You are always creating the life 
that you are about to walk into. It's like a make, making a future reservation. Mm-hmm. And so I think that people are lack awareness and that's, that's not diminishing anyone. It's just right. that we don't, most people do not comprehend the power that they have to affect the life that they're living and that they're going to walk into in some future moment. And the cost of that is that we live lives that feel less than happy, less than joyful, Mm -hmm. less than fulfilling, less than meaningful, and that we feel more diminished than who we truly are. And we perpetuate it. We perpetuate it by talking about it with other people. We perpetuate it by bonding with other people in those moments. And I'm not saying don't have those conversations. What I am offering here is the idea that if you knew that your thoughts and were always are, do, are always creating your reality, and that this conversation that you're having right now, this thought that you're having right now, is perpetuating a reality and creating a future reality that you're going to walk into, would you change the subject? Mm. Would you be more intentional with the direction of the conversation and the stories that you're telling? We all tell stories that do not serve us. And the flip side of that is that every time you do talk about, think about something that is diminishing you in some way, fashion or form, that or something that you don't want more Mm -hmm. of, you are creating more clarity for yourself about what you do want, whether you know it in that moment or not. So I'd like to speak to something else that you said earlier about conscious or unconscious. I like to, to, to clarify that by the way I think of conscious and unconscious is if you're having a thought and you're having a feeling response to it, Mm -hmm. it is conscious. Mm-hmm. And it is a player in re- in your reality. It is in this moment creating a future reality and in this moment consequence, if you will. Mm-hmm. If it's unconscious, meaning you're not having a, much of an emotional response to this thought, this focus, then it's not a big player in your reality and you don't really have to be concerned about it. But there's nothing that's happening that is very unconscious Mm-hmm. For the most of us, we might be oblivious. <laughs> yeah. But for Ooh. the most part, it is not unconscious. All right. So I want to I want to dig into that a little bit more. So we might be oblivious. Mm-hmm. Tell me more about that. I, I can't figure out yet exactly what I to- mean by that. Or, yeah. or how to, yeah, how to, well, how to frame that question. So it sort of comes talk around a little bit more about yeah. that. And then, yeah. It sort of comes around to what I already said. We're, we're oblivious. Many of us are not paying attention to how we feel or understanding the messages that, that, that our emotions are providing for us. Mm-hmm. And so when we think something and we, we have a feeling response, we think it's true. We, or we don't pay attention to the feeling response and we just rampage. We go on a rant of anger. We go on a rant of frustration. We go on a rant of something mm-hmm. that that is kind of like if you were to, to get in your car and say, I want to go to San Francisco. That rant is equivalent to getting in your car and going in the opposite direction of San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And so oblivious, that's what I mean. Most of us, most people are not aware that their thoughts create, their emotions indicate which direction they're going, whether they're opposing their desire, their mm-hmm. their dreams, their mm-hmm. intentions, or mm-hmm. whether they're aligning with all of those things. And, mm-hmm. and let's bring into this conversation the, the idea of that we are not just human beings. We are not just simply in physical form here. We are also souls, if you will. We all have mm-hmm. these non-physical partners, mm-hmm. many, in fact, with us. And, and I don't want that to sound too woo-woo, but that is, <laughs> that is part of who we all are. We are not mm-hmm. just beings having a physical experience. We are also souls having the experience through the physical. And so when you don't understand that relationship, Mm -hmm. then it does make you more oblivious. It does make you more, make your life feel like it's more random. Mm -hmm. And so 
the cost of not knowing this is that uh-huh. you think that your life is being created for you. Or like that you're a victim in well, yes, what's happening to be understood in, in the statement right. that I just made. Your life right. is happening to you, not to from you. you. Right. Right. And that is never the case. Your life is always, always, always happening from you. I'm not saying that you're going to like everything that you are creating, nor and and nor do you have to. And nor this message is not about saying you need to, once you know this stuff, you're going to create the perfect outcomes, the perfect end results to your point earlier, the perfect, right. you know, path. That's, that's not the point you're here to create, but isn't it lovely if you're on the way to a creation and you know what you're in the process of creating, you know, which way you're pointing that if you wanted to go to France, San Francisco, wouldn't you like to know that you're headed toward there <laughs> versus kind of not knowing where you are and hoping you get there? Yeah, you see, I did so a- all of this works together to help you understand that you are creating your life. You are the the creator and you are also a creation of what you're creating. You see, you're creating you and you're creating other things as well. And so it's helpful to understand how these pieces come together so that you can be more deliberate and that does and intentional. That doesn't mean you get all serious about creating your life <laughs> and take yourself seriously. That just means understand so that you can navigate, Mm -hmm. so that you can navigate. If you don't know where you're going, and I don't mean necessarily in specifics here, I did use a specific and say, we're going to San Francisco, but just- But you didn't say where in San Francisco. I didn't say where in San Francisco. Just know know whether you're pointing yourself in the direction of or opposing it. And and you are opposing it when you bring in those, those stories about yourself, those expectations that you've had, well, it didn't work out before, so I don't know. That doubt, that contradiction, I want this, but I've never had it. I wanna build my my business income, or I wanna have 20 employees or whatever it is that you've identified and you contradict it and you, mm-hmm. and you doubt and you look for reasons why it's not going to work. And understanding those pieces helps you understand where you are on your journey. And in fact, let's add something else here. The reason you have any goals, any desires at all is for the journey right? toward them, is for the discovery of you and everything else that you're going to discover along the way. The most satisfied you can be is enjoying the journey on your way to the inevitable outcomes that you want. And those inevitable outcomes, when you identify a spe- something specific that you want and you feel aligned with it, meaning you're not contradicting it, you're not, you're not filling that hose full of doubt and crap. <laughs> <laughs> That's really fun. When you yeah. have a desire that you ha- have identified specifically and you feel contradictions, you feel doubt, you feel unworthy, you feel whatever those contradictory thoughts might be, that's Mm -hmm. not very fun. So you're way better off to get into a more general perspective stance and say, I just want to feel good. Because Mm -hmm. everything that you want, everything that you, I, anyone identifies as as a goal, as a desire, as a dream, all of it is only, is only, only because of how you think it will have you feel. You will feel, Mm -hmm. fill in the blank. When you have it, mm-hmm. be it, do it, experience it, kiss it, lick it, whatever, <laughs> right? It's that's the only reason why we have goals mm-hmm. and desires to move toward is for the joy along the way. And because we think that having it will make us feel a certain way. So why not feel good along the way to it? And and start establishing those foundations that whatever it is that you want and have identified, you can experience it. Oh, there's so much in here that I want to unpack. So um, the the first place that I want to go is, is one of the places where you started around story and the stories that we make up in our head about how we are, how the world is, how other people are, how this one individual is. And you know, this is a this is a human brain construct. This is how the brain sorts information. It makes up story, and 
sometimes those stories are helpful and positive, and sometimes those stories are really not. So uh, I had the opportunity last weekend to be up in the Bay Area. I was going to San Francisco. Technically, I was going to Oakland. Uh, and I was going there for the memorial service of a close friend who had passed away a year ago from cancer. And she was way too young. She was just six months older than me. And we had been friends since 1991. And I am a super good crier. Like <laughs> you put me in front of a Kleenex commercial, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I have been in church services celebrating the life of somebody who has died that are happening in a language that I do not speak. And I cry. Like I, I'm just really good at feeling the emotions. And so I created a whole story about how it was going to be for me to be mm. there and that From I was your there. expectation based on my expectations yes. and my experience of myself. Yes. yes. I will. You put a Clydesdale and a puppy in a commercial and I will cry. So like celebrating the life of my friend who I've known for more than 30 years, her daughters are my goddaughters. Like I'm going to be a big hot mess. And because I'm going to be a big hot mess, I am not going to say anything. I'm sure that people are going to be invited to, to speak and I am not going to be somebody who speaks. And then here I was in the service and I cried, but it was like the tears down your face crying as opposed to the <gasps> kind of crying, which is, which is the kind I'm really good at. Like, ooh, I can sob right up there with the best of them. And, and then one of the people who spoke, spoke about play and fun. And that was my opening to go and talk about play and fun. And, and I knew exactly what I wanted to say. You know, it was one of those times where you feel called. And I just, I felt called to go up and I knew what to say and I knew how I wanted to say it and who I wanted to speak to in the audience. And, and it was great. And so I got to, in the, in the aftermath of it and in the, in the driving back down to Los Angeles for the, you know, six hours that it takes to drive from LA or from San Francisco to LA, I got to think about the power that that story about myself has and how I let it shape my anticipation of what this day, I mean, the, the service lasted for six hours, what the day was going to be like. And it turned out to be something totally different. And, and I, and I'm not sure what it was. Maybe it was this middle way idea. I'm not sure what it was that allowed me in the moment to let go of my attachment to the story and let something else come in. Well, uh, if I may. Please. I, because it resonated with, with who you truly are. Yeah. You see, you, it, it caught you in a moment. You had released enough resistance to in the moment doesn't mean that that story for you doesn't doesn't exist right it just means in that moment you resonated enough with a higher frequency with who you truly are which mm. just you see when and and you made the point beautifully with that because that's what happens when you can find that resonance with who you truly are then those stories that don't serve you those stories that limit you go away in those moments they're not they're not they're not in your awareness. They're not a, a factor mm -hmm. in, in your experience. But those moments of, of resonance with who we truly are, come and go, come and go. It's not, it's not like having a, a graduation certificate <laughs> uh -huh. and, and, you know, and now, 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 now I've made it. Way. You're an evolving, expanding being, always evolving, always expanding. But in that moment, you had released enough resistance to recognize, to feel the fullness of who you were, and you were able to step out of your story. Your story did not exist in that moment. 
-hmm. if you and I had had tried to have a conversation about that story, you would have been, um, um, what, wait, what? And then I could have helped you recall it. But in that moment, it was not present. And, and that really is a beautiful demonstration of what alignment is, alignment with who you truly are. Because in those moments, you don't feel diminished. You don't feel powerless. You don't feel, you don't have those stories crawling all over you. Uh -huh. and, and so one of the stories that, that or one, one of the tactics that our brain sometimes uses is, is this idea of overthinking. So when I was preparing for today, I, I found this quote about like how much we overthink. So 73% of 25 to, to 35 year olds chronically overthink. And and it doesn't diminish, you know, maybe it diminishes a little, but it doesn't go away as we age. 52% of those of us in our mid 40s to mid 50s are overthinking stuff. And, and then as this says, you know, it tends to get us focused on the past or on the future instead of in the present. Is reducing our tendency to overthink, is that part of our opportunity here? and connecting it in with your book? Yes, yes. And, and I want to expand on that because I, I consider, I think of overthinking happening only when you're not in alignment, when you're not, hmm. when, you're, when you're thinking things that feel, that feel. So here we're going to yeah. tie in the emotion that feel worrisome, that feel like you feel anxious, that feel mm -hmm. like you're concerned about something when you're thinking about something that you don't know the answer to and you keep asking the question, but you don't know the answer to like that, what's going to happen. It's having a nightmare on purpose into your future. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Wait, pause right there. It's having a nightmare on purpose mm -hmm. into your future. Yeah. Well, yeah. that sounds like a really bad plan. I don't want to have a nightmare on right. purpose that's creating my future. But most of us are, most of us do that. Right. At yeah. some, at, you know, you know, maybe not to that extreme, that way. but that's, you're, you're having a recurring nightmare on purpose by, so th that's, by dwelling. I like to, by dwelling. And I like to make that distinction. I only yeah. consider overthinking when it comes from that place of negative emotion, feeling bad, negative, not meaning bad, yeah. but but negative meaning it doesn't feel good. And I'm continuing to rummage around in this subject on this train of thought about about whatever that whatever. might be right yeah. and when but when i'm thinking and i'm feeling good that feels that doesn't feel like overthinking that feels yeah. like inspired thought that feels like fun to think about that feels like pleasure for the thought of it uh -huh. you see so think all you want when you feel good <laughs> my rule uh -huh. of thumb uh-huh think all you want when you feel good think less, back off, back off when you don't feel good. When And that's why tying in that understanding of I'm thinking something and what is my feeling response? How am I feeling as I'm thinking about this or I'm con contemplating doing this thing or having that conversation or having that conversation that is now or, or whatever it is I'm thinking about? How am I feeling? And if I'm feeling bad, it is my time to say, not now, maybe later. Not now, maybe later. What else could I think about that would be more uplifting to me? What else could I think about that I immediately, can I think about my dog and it feels mm -hmm. good? Can I think mm -hmm. about the trees or the, the forest or the whatever that is for you? My right. Putting my feet in the ocean doesn't uh -huh. matter. And, and a lot of people dismiss that and say, well, that's not very important thought. I said, well, you're not going to get to the solutions that you're seeking if you keep rummaging in that if you put your feet in the mud yeah and you wanted to and in, in, in a puddle and there was it was a muddy bottom and you wanted to see you wanted clarity to see your feet but yeah. you kept stirring your feet up <laughs> you would never find your feet they're, they're right. gone you would say there i can't find my feet <laughs> yes right so it's kind of like that and i was like the more you rummage around the more you play around the more you sit with thoughts that don't feel good the 
another analogy, the deeper hole you're digging, you're going further down that rabbit hole. And we all know yeah. how much rabbits multiply. <laughs> there, is, there is no bottom to that hole. You will yeah. always find more rabbits. So at some point you've got to say, well, the rabbits are there or the mud is there or whatever. I'm going to stop moving my feet, moving from yeah. different analogies here, but understand that, that when you are thinking and not feeling good, you're in the process of creating more nightmares and you're having one right now. And, and so making it really important to pay attention to how you feel and how what mm -hmm. you're thinking feels. It's not about getting over analytical about what you're thinking. And it's not about criticizing yourself for having those moments. Right. But it's always easier to keep thinking what you've been thinking than to think a different thought. And that is because of momentum. It's mm. like you get in your car and, and press on the gas pedal and it's fun to just- Off we go. Off you go. And so it, it's the same thing with your thoughts. The, the more- habit you get into of thinking something chronically, the easier it is to think about it. So if you if you label yourself, I'm a worrier, mm -hmm. well, it, it could be time to start saying, I'd like to be less of a worrier. That's a change. That's a we're talking about stories. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a slightly different story. How do you change the stories that you've been telling yourself all of your life? How do you shift from what you've come to know about yourself or expect about yourself and others and your future? How do you shift that and tell a different story if it's been very different from what you've wanted or if you've had experiences that you didn't want? You shift them a little bit at a time. Well, I'd like to be able to do that. Well, wouldn't it be nice if I could? I'd like to believe that I'm, I am I could become less of a worrier. I'd like to believe that I'm le I, I, I don't have to overthink things. I'd like to believe that things are are always working in my favor. I'd like to know more about understanding that things are for me, not against me. I'd like to know that I'm... I'm, I'm creating my, whatever it is, mm -hmm. I'd like to know, I'd like to believe, I'd like to, I'd like to think that that's possible. That's changing a story. I, if, if you tell a story, like I'm a crier, I cry. Is that really a bothersome story to you or not? Do you like it? Does it bother you? The only time that it bothers me is if, I end up feeling self-conscious about it. If I feel like I'm being judged by other mm. people around it. Well, that's a whole other conversation. That's a whole have. other conversation yeah, about Right, how about how that. other people, it's always my perspective of your perspective right. is how I feel, right? Yep. And so, yeah, people, you know what? People will judge. Yes, they will. People will look at you and think something. Whatever they think. Think something, but that is through their lens, Right. right? And it's through their lens of their experiences of what they've come to know, of what they've come to believe and what they've come to expect. And so someone else's perspective of you might be, is accurate based on them standing on in there, the but it's their shoes. It's not your shoes. Right. And so, so, so why I asked is simply because there are plenty of stories that if I, so I'll tell you a story about me. I hate tech. Don't like mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I, it's, overwhelming. It's too much. Don't care. Really don't care. <laughs> so someone might say to me, well, you need to change that story. Uh -huh. you, you need to change that story because you're limiting yourself, but I don't care. There's always right. somebody who can do it. Right. So, so the point I'm making here is not every story is a bad one. Right. And not every story needs to be changed. If you're good with it, be good with it. Let it be your story. But if you're recognizing that it is limiting in, limiting you in some ways, and when you tell that story, it doesn't feel good to you, you can feel you're diminishing yourself in some sort of way, then it's time to start telling a different story. Telling a different story, again, I'll reiterate, does not have to be a, you're broke and you want more money. I am a millionaire. <laughs> No, no. Now you're delusional. No. Well, right. you, you are actually are, you are wealthier than you are allowing yourself to be is the reality for right. everyone. Yes. But if you, if you hit a store, if you try to compensate with words, something that you don't believe yet. Yeah. It's the equivalent of having someone push you on the ground push you to the, to the ground. That's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying is, wouldn't it be nice if I had more money sometime? Wouldn't it be nice if I could make more money? In fact, I have enough money today. 
I have enough money in this moment Mm -hmm. or, you know, plug in whatever you want here. Employees, when we're relating it to business, whatever, plug in whatever whatever it is. It's just simply don't tell yourself something you don't believe. Mm -hmm. Start where you are and just soften it. Just modify it. Just tell it slightly differently. Speak it in the direction and feel it in the direction of where you want to go versus this is my reality and this is what is. Well, you know what? If you if all you ever do is observe the reality of what is, that's all that you're ever going to continue to recreate and perpetuate. That's it. And it reinforce. Won't go, reinforce. You see, yeah. it will never go beyond that, not much further beyond that except for in those moments when you find enlightenment, when you feel, when you feel full of yourself, you'll, that's the time you change your story, right? When you're feeling high on life and happy on life, maybe you're at a ball game, maybe you're with friends enjoying life. That's when you can, that's when you feel who you truly are. And that's when you can modify the the truth of who you are, because the truth is right there and you're there with it. Don't try and tell it when you're not with that truth. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. That it, absolutely, and that's actually where I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> end it for today because that that was a beautiful articulation of of the opportunity here and always an opportunity. Yeah, Christine, thank you so much for sharing of your wisdom, for sharing of your perspective, for sharing of yourself. I so appreciate you and who you are and and how you move through the world and call us to move through it as well. Thank you so much for being here with us today. My pleasure. I am Janine Hamner-Holman, and this has been The Cost of Not Paying Attention. Remember, great leaders make great teams. Until next time. On behalf of Janine Hamner-Holman, thanks for paying attention. This has been the cost of not paying attention. Head on over to our website, www.janinehamner.com forward slash podcast for access to the show notes as well as additional resources. Remember, great leaders make great teams.